Hi, this is Zach. In this video lecture, I'll be talking to you about data frames and tables. So a data frame is a data structure in R that is used for storing tabular or two-dimensional data. Here's a very simple example of a data table or data frame. So we have five students for each row is basically a student, information about a student, and each column represents some type of information, like there's the student's names, gender, their quiz score, and their exam score. So in R, you can use the base R functions for working with data frames, or you can use the tidyverse functions. Uh, the base R functions to create a data frame are, is the function data.frame, whereas the tidyverse function equivalents are tibble and tribble. For reading and writing, you have read.csv and write.csv from base R, whereas from tidyverse, it's read underscore csv and write underscore csv. Now, you might be thinking, like what? What's the difference between read.csv and read underscore csv? And we'll go through that in the coding demo later. You might also be wondering what is a csv file? Uh, csv. CSV is basically a comma separated values file. That's where the C, the S, and the V come from. Basically, it's a way to represent data in a text file. So for example, if you have a da this data table and you save it as a CSV file, it looks something like this. So you save the names of the columns and the values and you separate, uh, you separate values or the name, column names, using the comma as a delimiter. For, file, for data that's not too big, typically it will be stored as a CSV file because that's a very portable way to store and to read and write data. All right, so let's get to the coding demo. All right, so first you need to load the tidyverse. All right, and to create a data frame, I'm, I'm going to show you how to create a data frame by hand, but typically you only do this when the data is fairly small. So first you can use the data.frame function. And if you use this function, you have to create the data column by column. So, for example, you input the names first, and then you input the gender, and then the quiz scores and the exam scores. So let's run that. Control or Command Enter. And this is what the data looks like here. You notice that the data also appears in the environment. One way to view the data is to click it, like this. And then after you're done, you can close it. Usually, I would just view it in the console by typing the name of the data frame, like that, S1. But both could work. I think I recommend getting comfortable with the console, because I'm not sure if this data viewer always updates. The next way to do, create a data frame is to use the tibo function, which is basically the same as the data.frame function. All right, so I'm going to skip through that. Last, I'm going to tell you about the tribo function. Tribo is different from tibo because of the R here. And the difference is that a tribo is created using a row by row layout, which I, in my opinion is easier to read. When you use the tribo function, you need to tell Tribble, what are the names of the columns using the tilde symbol? And so the four columns, each column has the tilde symbol first, telling you that this is the name of the column. Then you have the values separated by commas. And the last value doesn't need a comma. In fact, if you put a comma there and you save this file, you notice that there's a warning. Right, so don't put a comma for the last value because it's not needed. 
All right, so if you run this, then that's what you get, and good. All right, so now let's talk about how to access basic information from a data frame. So if you're not sure if something is a data frame, you can use the class function to check. So the first one that we created was a data frame. If you use class on a table, you basically get something like tbl underscore df or tbl as well as data frame. So a tibble kind of can pretend to be a data frame or pretend to be a tibble depending on the situation required. If you want to know how many rows are in your data frame, use the nRow function. If you want to know how many columns, use the nCall function. If you want to access a column of the data frame, then you can use the dollar sign or dollar symbol. So for example, S3 dollar exam means the exam column of the S3 data frame. Now let's say you want to compute the mean exam score. You could do it directly using the mean and the dollar sign symbol. So take the mean of this column of the data frame, like so. Or you can use the summary function. So for example, if you do that, it computes the summaries of every summary statistics for every column. Since name and gender are not a character values, they, you don't really have summary statistics for those. But for the quiz and the exam scores, you do have summary statistics showing the minimum, the maximum, the three quartiles, first quartile, the median, and the third quartile. That's basically the 25th percentile, the 50th percentile, and the 75th percentile, and the mean. Another thing you can do is to count. So uh, if you want to count how many males and how many female students do you have, you can count the data frame and the column. So this, the result shows you that you have three female students and two male students. If you want to find out how many students scored at least 80 marks in the exam, you can also do count with more complicated kind of functions of columns, uh, like exam greater than equal to 80. So this shows you that two of these students had an exam score less than 80, and three had an exam score greater than or equal to 80. All right, last section, uh, we'll be talking about reading and writing a data frame to a CSV file. You can use the write.csv function with the data frame and the file name to write. The S3 variable into students.csv. And if you want to read the CSV file into the a variable called, a new variable called x, this is what you would do. So first notice there's no x here. But once I run this command using command enter, x appears. And of course x is what we know it is. The write underscore and the read underscore functions from the tidyverse behave basically the same way as the base r functions. So I'm just going to go through that bit more quickly. Notice y doesn't exist yet. Once I run this, y exists and appears. All right, so you might be wondering what's the difference between read.csv and read underscore csv. So let's download this file to illustrate the difference. So copy this and then go to your open your browser and right in, click the download button. Hey, who is that handsome guy? Oh, it's me. Okay, so click the download button and then it, you can save it to, probably it saves in your downloads folder like this. So that's the first step. After downloading it, you need to also save the file into your current working directory. That basically means uh, where R is in the file system. So to find out what's your current working directory, use the get wd function, like so. And then this 
is my current working directory. I'm using a Mac. Uh, it looks a bit different for Windows. So move to your use the Finder or the File Explorer to get to your current working directory, which I already did that, so it's here it is. Move the file that you downloaded into the current working directory like so. And then you can try to read the file now. Alright, so let's uh, if you use base, the base R function read.csv, what you see that is that it prints large data frames in a very messy way. So for example, you read it, so it's a data frame, and let's print it. Yikes! You see a lot of data, basically, that just gets spit out at you. Uh, and basically you get 90 rows. It warns you at the bottom that you actually had more than you basically reached your maximum printing capacity and they didn't print 144 rows. So read.csv or the, the regular data frame prints kind of in a very ugly way. It's a bit like verbal diarrhea where they just blah, vomit out all the information and it's a, it's a mess and not very easy to understand. On the other hand, Tibbo's prints much more elegantly. So let's try the same to read the same file using read underscore csv. Uh, so read underscore csv also tells you about the type of each column. So that's kind of useful information to know. And uh, okay, as you print it, you see that the, the output is much shorter. It tells you there are 234 rows and 11 columns. It, in this case, it's able to display all the columns, but you'll cut them short if it's not able to display every column. It tells you the, the column types, data types, and it also kind of compresses some of the columns, which might be too long, so that it can fit more information in the console. And it so tells you there are 224 more rows that they didn't print. So definitely this looks much nicer than what you saw um, from the regular data frames. So Tibbo's pr prints nicer than regular data frames. For this course, and in general in your future life, I do not recommend that you use read.csv or write.csv. These base R functions are messier to work with, but also they can give you weird errors related to factors that are a bit more troublesome to debug if you use them. So don't, just don't use them. You will be happier, I will be happier, your course grade will be happier, and you know, everything will be better. All right, uh, so yes, just to conclude, don't use the base R functions, just use the tidyverse functions. So I'm just showing you the base R functions so you know what they are, because you might see them in some of the older code, or from people who haven't you know, haven't learned or haven't used the tidyverse yet, but for, you know, in your own coding experience, I strongly recommend you only use the tidyverse. Okay, that's all from me for now. See you next time. Bye.